At Hot Shops, we cook lean cuts of choice roast beef every day. We bake fresh rolls, muffins, and fruit pies every day. And at Hot Shops, we cook our chicken so they're always tender, juicy, and delicious. Because the way we see it, if we're going to ask you to leave all your great home cooking behind, you should have equally great cooking to look forward to. Okay, let's eat. Hot Shops, cafeterias and restaurants. Food worth leaving home for. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. We're back with another episode of Discontinued Foods, the series where I try to resurrect foods from chain restaurants, broken chains, and defunct eateries. Toward the end of 2022, I found this book in a local thrift store, the official Marriott Hot Shops cookbook published in 1987. When this book was released, I wouldn't exactly call the chain thriving. In fact, it was on its last legs. Incidentally, it's a year that my family moved to Virginia from Texas. I'd heard about Hot Shops from friends that were native to the Washington DC area, but I never had the opportunity to eat there in person before they were completely disbanded by the Marriott Corporation. In fact, they wouldn't even make it to Y2K. The last official Hot Shops location closed in 1999, 72 years after its founding. So what made this place so special and why would I want to resurrect its most iconic menu item, the Mighty Mo? Well, let's dip into a bit of history. The year is 1927 and J. Willard Bill Marriott moves to the Washington DC area from Utah to open his first A&W root beer stand. After spending a night passing through the city in 1921, he notices a booming trade that the local vendors were doing with tourists and government employees alike. So in 27, when he returns from Utah, he brings a business partner with him and opens his first restaurant at 3128 14th Street Northwest. Within a few months, he travels back to Utah to marry his sweetheart Alice, or Allie, Sheets, and brings her back to DC. The first location is a booming success, and he opens a second on 9th Street in short order. However, frosted root beer is a hot seller in the warmer months, but business slows down greatly in cooler temps, and he needs another way to keep his operation going. With Allie's contribution, he launches a third restaurant based on his affinity for American Southwest foods such as spicy barbecue, chili, and tamales. The name came from his desire for a restaurant that would provide hot food to warm the DC residents during the wet chill of an eastern winter. They chose the name Hot Shops. By the 1950s, the chain took on a more up-to-date fast food profile, highlighting new inventions like the Mighty Mo, a tasty triple-decker hamburger named after the battleship the USS Missouri, which had just been retired following World War II. The Mighty Mo competed with the Big Boy, a triple-decker burger offered by rivals Bob's Big Boy, which Marriott Corporation would actually later buy. The Hot Shops was also known for its grilled ham sandwich called the Teen Twist, as well as its breaded onion rings, a milkshake called the Orange Freeze, and Pappy Parker's fried chicken, which would become a featured menu item for the Roy Rogers restaurant chain after the Marriott takeover in 1968. In the 1970s, the restaurant chains were becoming increasingly more expensive to maintain, and the Marriott's had another growing asset to focus their attention on their expanding hotel chain, which they started back in 1957. By 74, there were only 20 hot shops left, with the remainder having been converted to smaller hot shop junior locations. More closings were on the horizon, including their original 14th Street location, which was bulldozed the same year. Meanwhile, the company's junior hot shops locations were all converted to Roy Rogers, which were considered more profitable. And in 1989, the Marriott Corporation would be getting out of the fast food space altogether, bringing about an end to an era. A few locations would limp along until the final closing in 1999. All right, here we are in downtown Fairfax, and you're probably thinking, sweet, I like Einstein Brothers bagels. Uh, me too, but however, this building did not start life as an Einstein bagels place. This shopping center was built sometime in the late 60s. Uh, this building appears in like 1968, Whereas before, this was just nothing but empty field. However, I do believe this building started life as a Hot Shops Junior or Junior Hot Shops, which was their smaller location that served just a few items off of their main regular menu. When Marriott took over and created the Roy Rogers franchise, this became a Roy Rogers 
almost immediately. Most of the hot shops locations have been torn down and this building still retains that very distinct architecture. And the reason I came out here is because this is one of the last ones left, the last buildings that are still around. Almost all of the original Hot Shops buildings are gone now. So fun little urban archeology span trip aside, you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. Now, let me show you that there is still a glimmer of life from this beloved chain. All right, we're outside of the Marriott Marquis in downtown Washington, DC. There's a restaurant inside called The Anthem and supposedly they have a very limited hot shops menu. One of the only places around where you can still get some of the original hot shops food items. And we're here to try the Mighty Mo Burger, which I've never had. While researching this dead restaurant chain last fall, I stumbled upon a DC restaurant review from several years ago announcing the opening of The Anthem and their very limited resurrected hot shops menu items. I knew I had to try the burger myself before attempting to make it for this video. My brother and I got there right when they opened for lunch midweek in December of 2022. It's a modern take on classic diner decor. All right, here are the Hot Shops classics. And there's the Mighty Mo Burger. We're gonna get that. And out comes my burger in all of its vintage glory. And I opted for the under rings. I noticed right off the bat that it has a plain bun like the original 1950s version and has an additional ring of lettuce that's not mentioned in the official cookbook. This burger looks and smells amazing. All right, first bite, let's try this. It's messy, it has a really interesting flavor. So a month later, we go back there with a friend while attending the DC Auto Show at the convention center next door. And I opt this time for the teen twist. However, my friend gets the Mighty Mo. By now you're probably thinking I'm off my rocker, but this one is assembled completely differently than my last one. And it has a poppy seed bun. I see now why people rave about that burger and why they miss it so much. It is fantastic. That's like a top five burger. So now let's go home and see if we can try to make it. Okay, as we make our way to the kitchen, I want to show you this paragraph from the forward to the Hot Shops cookbook as presented by Alice Marriott herself. In part, Bill was always a stickler for detail. He supervised the creation of recipe cards for every Hot Shops chef and cook so that they would produce uniformly seasoned food. In his spirit, I suggest that you try to follow these instructions exactly, just the way Bill insisted our chefs had to when he conducted his famous inspections. Let's start with the easiest thing first, the Mighty Mo sauce. You're basically making Thousand Island dressing, and fair warning, this goes a long way, and I captured the rest of the recipe in a jar for future use. Believe it or not, it actually goes great with eggs. I just did a condiment clean out of my fridge, so I had to buy a bunch of this stuff fresh. And it seems like a lot, but remember, they would have made vats of this in the actual restaurant. Half a cup ketchup, quarter cup chili sauce, one and a half teaspoons of A1 sauce, one and a half teaspoon Worcestershire sauce, two drops of Tabasco, one half cup sweet pickle, and one and a quarter cups of mayonnaise. So right now you have this mess. You're just gonna stir thoroughly and then set aside. Now on to the ingredients. And I'm using 80-20 ground beef for this. You'll want to season the ground beef just a little bit. I'm adding some salt and pepper. I made two rough quarter pound patties and these are going to shrink up once I start frying them. I thought I'd try this seasoned griddle pan to see if I couldn't recreate those restaurant grill marks. My pan is just hot enough that it actually kind of works. I'm shooting for medium well so now's the time to add my one slice of American cheese. While the burgers are cooking, I also have these Nathan's brand onion rings going in the oven. If I had an air fryer, they would be even better, but these actually end up tasting spot on to the ones I had at the Anthem. Once the burgers are done, I take them off and set them aside to rest. And in a separate pan, I start to toast up the buns with a little bit of butter. Step three is assembly, and here's how to prepare your burger. Spread two teaspoons of Mighty Mo sauce on bottom of roll. Top dressing with shredded lettuce, then hamburger. Top hamburger with middle layer of bun, grilled side up, and spread with remaining two teaspoons of Mighty Mo sauce. Top with your cheeseburger. Place two dill pickle chips on cheese. 
cover pickle with top of bun, do not cut. And that's it. It's time to eat, so I'm gonna let y'all go now. If you like this video, please give it a like. It took a long time for me to research. Leave me a comment if you remember Hot Shops. I'd love to hear about your experiences with the chain. Also, let me know which chain I should cover next. I'm having fun with this series, and I have several other videos already in process. Please subscribe to keep up to date with my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.